Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. Today we're going to be replaying our fussy cutting video tutorial that we use Nocturne In. This is my first collection that I designed with QT Fabrics. It's a curated collection and you can learn more about that in the first video we posted this week where we looked at the design process from start to finish with Nocturne. Yesterday we took a look at unboxing it when I got to see the fabric in person for the first time. So you can watch that as well. And today we're going to show you a lot of the patterns that we designed to go with it involve fussy cutting. And if you don't know what fussy cutting is, it's essentially the process of turning your fabric into Swiss cheese so you can get the exact motif you want to be in the center of your block. So we show you how we can take this lovely little owl right here and cut it out so it's right in the center of your block. And that's what today's video is all about. You don't have to use it with Nocturne, but if you are doing any of the patterns or kits that we've designed with it, this is a great video to watch to make sure your owls can look fabulous when you put it together. All right, let's take a peek and don't forget, you can now order Nocturne on our website. We finished cutting all of our pre-orders and we're working on getting those shipped out to you. It's a lot, so it's taking a little bit of time, but we are now have orders open for all of our yardage and our remnants. You can get those right now and we'll ship them out to you as quickly as possible. If you would like a kit or a fabric bundle, those are all available on back order. So we will fill them from the stock that QT has in their warehouse and if the demand is really big then we will have to wait until the reorder of fabric arrives in July. So the sooner you get your order in the less likely you are to have to wait to get that fabric. So go check out all of that over at shop.quiltanonymous.com. We'll link to it in the eye above and in the video description below. And while you're at it make sure you subscribe to our channel because we put out lots of video tutorials all the time to inspire you to make something new. All right, let's learn how to fussy cut. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to fussy cut your favorite motifs and borders out so that they look absolutely fabulous in your final quilt designs. And I got inspired to do this when I was taking a peek at my own very first fabric collection, Nocturne. And basically these owls are gonna look best if you fussy cut them all. And for those of you who don't know what fussy cutting is, it's basically the practice of turning your fabric into Swiss cheese. What we're going to do is we're gonna cut out just the motif that we want to keep and that is gonna be front and center in your quilt block. So I'm gonna show you how to do it on a square and then also how to do it on border prints. So that way you can have a nice straight border going up the side of your quilt and it doesn't look crooked even if it isn't. All right, so let's go ahead and go over how to do that. Shameless plug, by the way, you can order Nocturne over on our website. It's available for pre-order at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. We have pre-orders open until October 11th and then we have to put in our order to the fabric company that we worked with to make it, QT Fabrics, and then it will ship to you sometime in January. We ask that if you like it, that you do pre-order because we have zero idea how much you guys would like because this is our first time doing a fabric collection. And so that way everybody who wants something can get what they want and we can order, we'll order more, but we'll at least get as what everybody wants there. So again, that's at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. We've got lots of kits you can check out. And of course you can always pick and choose some yardage as well. All right, so for this fabric, the largest shape you can cut without having to lose any of these owls is a 5.5 squ inch square. So I've got my 12 and a half inch square ruler because I have three six and a half inch square rulers and can't find any of them right now. I know y'all have felt that with me as well. And then I've got some painter's tape. Washi tape will work too, so we'll post it. So you basically want something with low tack, so that way you can take it off and it won't leave any residue on your ruler. All right, so one thing that probably some people don't always know is that there are two sides to your ruler and there is a right and a wrong side. So this side is nice and smooth. It's all the plastic. And this side, I can feel the printing of the grid on. So you wanna make sure that that side is facing down. It's gonna have all your numbers going up as well. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see this. And basically what I'm trying to do is create a window so that way I can really easily see what's going to be cut out. Cause it's really easy to look at this and see where the edges are. It's harder to visualize where it's going to be on the outer edge that is within the ruler. All right, so like I said before, a 5.5 inch square is the largest I'm gonna be able to get from this particular fabric. And so that is the biggest square that we're going to be using in any of the patterns that we have uh, 
customize to go with this. So I've got a piece of painter's tape. All right, so I'm just gonna do very carefully, line this up right on top of that 5.5 .5 inch mark, just like that. Then once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna go ahead and lift up my ruler and go ahead and wrap that around the other side. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the vertical. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and line that up again. So now this little window that we've created, we know that anything that's in this is going to show up when we cut it out and we can more easily center whatever it is that we're working with. In this case, it's gonna be the owl. All right, I'm gonna work with the one in the bottom corner, but you certainly can cut out anything that's dead center as well if you're trying to get it uh, to fit a little bit better. But I'm just gonna work with this bottom corner one just because it's easy to get to, and then I can work my way across the row if I were cutting a bunch of these, which I certainly will need to do for some of the uh, quilts that are coming out. All right, so when you look at this, you wanna think what is the halfway point of 5.5? And that is going to be two and three quarter. So I want my two and three quarter to go straight down the center of that owl, which it is. And I know because I've already cut a bunch of these that if I have the two and a half and the three inch on either side of this sort of trellising that's going around, then I'm gonna be set. So I wanna make sure I can, I've got that line down here, but I don't down here, so I've got to change that just a little bit. That way this center part, which everyone is going to see first, is looking fantastic. All right, so now I need to take a look at everything else. I need to make sure that we are in line on the top and bottom as well. All right, so if I'm looking at the top and bottom here, I can see that in this part, I'm seeing the one, two of these white marks, but here I'm not. So I know I need to pull this down some so that I can be more evenly represented there and get that owl dead center. So now that I pulled it down some, I still have this as center. I've still got that two and a half and the three on those bits. And now I've got a quarter inch on the top one here and down here, but you could see that it was printed a little crooked and that happens sometimes. So there's some things you can do to make that work. And mostly you're just gonna give it a little bit of a tug with your fabric. And so now when we look at it, we can see that this is really clearly going across those straight lines. We're looking pretty good here. And now I'm gonna take a peek over here as well. We've got the quarter inch is going nice straight up and down here and also straight up and down here. So that way when we sew this together, we're gonna lose of course our quarter inch of the seam allowance, but it's going to fit nice and snugly across those vertical lines. And then also up here, it's going to be nice and straight because we can see everything is going together. We still have this nice and straight, so we're good to go. Now that would not have happened had I not manipulated the fabric a little bit and pulled it up a little bit. So you really wanna pay attention to that. So now that I've got that good to go, I'm gonna go ahead and cut on my right and my top. Now, if you're a left-handed, you of course would be working so that you're cutting on your left-hand side first. So now I'm gonna go ahead and move that out of the way because we're not gonna mess with this for right now. What I am gonna do with this is I'm gonna give it a 180 degree flip. Now we've already cut these edges that was on the top and the right. So now I need to get everything lined back up and I'm gonna start with that center. I know that this is you know dead center for this. So I wanna get that nice and lined up. And sometimes when you had to manipulate the fabric a little bit, you have to manipulate it again at this stage in order to get it to come up where it needs to be. So you can see that this is not straight anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that little pull. And that is looking much better. That is very much in line there and here. So I can go ahead, I've got straight lines here, straight lines here, 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 center is good. All right, so now I can go ahead and get that a nice little trim on my right and top. And again, it would be your, your left and top if you were left-handed. All right, so now I've got my little owl cut out perfectly in the center, and we are going to have it look nice and straight when it is sewn together in a center block. And I will, not in this video, but I will show you an image of what this looks like sewn together in a center block so you can see how cute it is when it is all together and looking fabulous. And you just have your little owl hooting out at you from the center of your block. Now, just this one quick little shameless plug on how well this was designed here 
and I know I'm tooting my own horn, but I'm also, we worked with a designer to do it. Uh, this is all that's left over when you are trimming to five and a half inches. So you really don't lose hardly any of the fabric. Sometimes people are hesitant to do fussy cutting because they feel like there is a lot of fabric waste, but this one was designed specifically so that way when it was all, you know, taken apart and um, cut out, that you really are not losing that much. And that way you can feel good about it, you can fussy cut it, it can look fabulous, but you're not dealing with a lot of fabric waste that you paid money for and that you really can't use. So just a teeny little bit, little tiny bit. All right, let's move on to borders. All right, so now I've pulled one of the prints that I'm going to use for a quilt border and it is super cute. It has that mimic of that trellis looking tile uh, that's going up and down but this type of fabric is very rarely printed straight on the grain and it's because it's not woven. You have to weave something in order to it be actually be straight on the grain like that. And so what we wanna do, instead of just slicing straight across this, we're gonna unfold it and we're gonna make sure that we are cutting across the same point all the way going up for that first bit. And then it's gonna be easier to make everything work and come together the way it should in the next bit. All right, so first let's unfold everything. And I'm cutting this particular border down to four inches. So I'm gonna give it a little bit extra space because I want to be able to get everything nice and centered there. So I'm giving it about four and a half inches on this side. And what I'm doing here is I'm trying to line it up. We've got all these really nice straight bits here. So I'm trying to line it up so that it is exactly on all of those going all the way up. And sometimes you may have to, you know, pull your fabric a little bit in order to make that work. All right, so now I've got it all lined up right along all these little blue straight pieces right here. Give you a little bit closer look. You can see they're all just right along there, all the way from the bottom to the top. Also got plenty of room over here, so if we get skinnier at the top, we're gonna be good to go. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and give that a slice and just be very careful not to shift my ruler because we wanna maintain that straight edge so that our border looks straight when it is all said and done. All right, now since we are cutting this one half at a time, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that apart a little bit, pull it down towards me. And now what I've done here is I've got a little bit here where I can still see where this was. So that way I can see my cut very clearly and I can very easily continue to line it up on that little blue line going all the way up. And up here, you can see it's starting to jog out from that. So what I wanna do is I've gotta pull it back this way a little bit first. All right, I'm just manipulating that fabric so that I get that nice straight line all the way up and down. And then I'm just giving little tugs to get it right where it should be. That way I'm not stretching anything out of place. Now that may seem pretty fiddly, but I promise you that when you have this border on and it, it looks absolutely straight with the print, and then it makes your quilt look even more square. It is so worth it and so worth the effort. All right, so now we have just trimmed this side down. So now I'm gonna trim this side down to four inches. You can do that either open like we just did, or to save time, you can fold it in half. And I'm going to lay it down so that my cut edge is even on this side. And then if you take a little bit of extra time to make sure to line up all of your edges here, perfectly on top of one another, then you can just go ahead and cut your four inch and it will be okay and it will all stay nice and lined up. I'm gonna zoom in to show you guys something. So because I was manipulating that fabric, it's when I just lay this down right on top of it, it is popping out just a, the teeniest bit, about an eighth of an inch. So what I'm gonna do is grab this little side and I'm just gonna give it the teeniest little pull to get everything to line up perfectly with that four inch. That way I'm gonna have a perfectly straight four inch. And we can see on the other side here that everything is looking nice and straight and will continue to look straight going all the way up. All right, so now with the rest of these, this is the edge that I trimmed here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that nice and lined up on top of each other as well, because then I can just go ahead and cut and I don't have to fuss and line everything up every single time like I did with the first time. All right, so this is now straightened out. 
But I'm gonna show you one more tip that will really help bring your piecing to the next level. In this particular border, I need to cut two strips for every side of the border. And you don't wanna spend all the time fussy cutting and making it perfect, and then have them like jog off. So that way when they're sewn together or something, if I were to just cut four inches, you can see how that would look off. It all of a sudden jogs over. So we don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay it down and I'm going to kind of move it around until it is matched and looking right. I think we've got it here. So if you remember, we were working on this inside line that we were cutting off on. So I'm just working to line everything up so that it lines up as though this were part of the fabric. I'm gonna go ahead and do that all the way up the piece. All right, now that I've got that just about as close as I can get it, I'm gonna go ahead and lay my ruler down so that it is exactly even with the edge that I just cut of the strip from above. And then I'm gonna cut along that side. Then I can take and flip this over, cut it down to size, and we are good to go. We are ready to go with our strip and it will match up perfectly. So that's it. That's all you need to know to fussy cut your borders so they look super straight and also your block center so that they are perfectly centered with whatever motif it is that you want to cut out. Thanks so much for watching this video tutorial. I hope you help it out. It helps you out on your next quilt with some special fabric. I would love it if you made it my special fabric. And again, you can pre-order Nocturne and any of the quilt kits that we have or just yardage or bundles over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. Thanks for watching and happy quilting.